here and just uh, thank you again for being here. We're excited about Lester uh, coming to us and presenting a little message to us. Uh, it's a great, great day in Warren County, great day to have a, a Warren County native back to, to speak to all of us. Just want to give you a quick agenda uh, what we're going to be doing. We're going to see a brief video by Mr. Walker. At, at that conclusion of that, Mr. Ken Smith is going to introduce Lester. Lester's going to speak to you guys. He's going to leave you some, uh, leave some time for some questions at the end. And following that, Mayor Haley is going to present a proclamation to Lester and the key of the city. And I think baseball is going to do a quick presentation after that. So having said that, we'll see what Mr. Walker has to say. Good morning, Warren County High School Pioneers. This is Jimmy Walker here. First of all, I want to welcome today's guest speaker, Mr. Lester Strode. Lester, I apologize for not being there due to a family commitment but I did dress up for you today to make you feel at home. First, I want to congratulate you and the Chicago Cubs on the World Championship for 2016. Lester, you've always been an inspiration to a lot of people in Warren County, especially me, someone that I've always looked up to when you played high school baseball. Students, today I hope you can gather something from Lester and take something from hard work and dedication that he's done for over 25 plus years in Major League Baseball. Lester, I appreciate the time that you've given. Thank you. Guys, please listen and go Cubs. Yogi Berra was a catcher for the New York Yankees and over his career had many yogiisms. One of those yogiisms was when you come to the fork in the road, take it. Doesn't say take it to the right or to the left, but just take it. The man behind me is one that uh, took the correct road. His goal when he was a student athlete here was to graduate by a car and go to work at Zurich where his father worked. But Lester had a God-given talent. Now, I think we all have God-given talents in some area. But Lester chose the right door. The door was opened for him by Coach Leo Davis and myself. And he took that door by going on to college. And every step of the way through Lester's career, from college all the way through to the major leagues, there's been a door open. And Lester has taken the right fork. So today he's going to talk to you about uh, some of his experiences and about perseverance. And so without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the bullpen coach for the world champion 2016 Chicago Cubs. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be back here today uh, the same high school where I graduated. Unfortunately, it wasn't the same high school, but it's, uh, uh, it's the same name of the high school where I graduated. Um, and I never thought that in 2016, I would be standing here talking to the student body. And um, it's a pleasure being here and, 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 and a great opportunity for me to be here as well. Uh, hopefully I can leave you uh, some type of message that can uh, enhance your life, uh, your goals and aspirations in life and uh, move forward. Um, as Ken said, uh, I born and raised right here in McMinnville, went to high school here in McMinnville. Uh, my mom's sitting right here uh, and uh, my dad unfortunately lost him three years ago, I believe it was. Uh, but they was the first inspiration of my life. They was the one who set the tone for me to uh, do something positive in life and, uh, uh, and, and work hard at it. Um, so as I um, went through life, went through the experiences and so forth, I had a lot of mentors that guided me, a lot of friends that gave me advice, and as you know, yourself, sometimes your friend give you good advice, sometimes they give you bad advice, but you have to make choices for yourself that's what's best for you and then. Even coming from your teachers that uh, gives you quite a bit of advice and your coaches, those who play sports and so forth, 
They're, they're, you're getting so much information. But the bottom line is you have to know what you want to do in life. You have to know what your goals are in life. And speaking of goals, once you know what it is you want to accomplish in life, to get there, you have to set many goals to get there. It's just not going to happen for you. And that's sort of how my life has gone. You know, it, I, I just didn't start playing baseball and ended up at the major leagues. There's a process to it. And you have to figure out what your direction is going to be getting there. And yes, there's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be failures doing this. But failures, if you look at them in a positive way, failures can be good. Because sometimes the failures teach you something different and sometimes even teach you to, to go in a, a, a better direction than the, one you was, uh, the direction you were headed in. So, so don't be afraid to fail, okay? But just look at it and say, okay, how can I take this failure and turn it into a positive? Okay, because the, in reality, just real quick, in reality, the game of baseball is a game of failure. There's not many businesses or anything in life where you can go at, at the plate and, uh, and as a hitter, go at the plate and swing the bat or, or go at the plate 10 times and only hit the ball three times. And that's only 33 percent and be successful besides baseball. So, but, and there's a lot of million dollar players doing that, but it's a failure in the, in, the, in the game in reality. So don't be afraid of failure. Failure can be a positive in many ways. So anyway, I, wanna, I just wanna talk about a couple of things about myself and how I got to where I am today. And I'm gonna try to breeze through it because it's 28 years that I'm talking about. So we don't have that kind of timeline. So um, <clears throat> anyway. I started right here in McMillville playing in the Pony Leagues, the Little Leagues, the Babe Ruth, uh, American Legion. And I got to the point of, in my uh, baseball uh, uh, career where I kind of got burnt out at it a little bit and I wanted to do other things. I was wanting to be um, one of the boys, you might say, and hang out with my friends and so forth. And. Um, Is that any of you guys? <laughs> so anyway, um, <clears throat> but because of the, uh, the teachings through my parents and the teachings through my coaches and teachings through my uh, family members and, and friends and so forth, uh, it uh, kept me going in the right direction, although I wasn't playing baseball. Uh, and, I, I, and I still wasn't getting in trouble, but I felt like I needed to do something productive, so I was working, getting me a job working. Because at that time, uh, what really motivated me was the fact that my dad, who was a hard worker and, and, a, and, and a, a very good man, uh, as far as helping out, being a part of the community and so forth, I watched him go out each and every day, work, and try to provide for his family, so that instilled the discipline and the work ethics in me, watching him. And then, of course, a piece of the life that I really wasn't very fond of. I had a, my dad and my uncle, they wanted to be farmers. And I got nothing against farmers, believe me. I got nothing against, I, I appreciate them. Uh, I know they're a big part of this world. Uh, without them, we won't be having food on our table and so forth, so I respect that. But that wasn't something I wanted to do, you know? And that's what you got. You got to figure out what you want to do, okay? So, uh, with that being said, though, but I, I learned quite a bit by by working in, in those type of environments. You know uh, what it took, you know, to to be able to go out and be committed and do things like that. Um, so anyway, uh, I got back into baseball because of my cousin. Um, he wanted to go out for baseball team and. Uh, and uh, I said, well, no, I don't want to play anymore. I'm done. He, he talked me into going out. Well, unfortunately, I made the team. He got cut. Um, I felt kind of bad about that. And uh, with uh, the leadership of Coach Smith here and the leadership of Leo Davis, um, they kept me going in the right direction. Uh, it was a choice I had to make. I had to make the choice either to stand with hanging out with my friends or playing baseball. I chose baseball. And that's one of those forks in the road he was talking about. So anyway, from there, not knowing what was going to happen after that, and like as Ken said, once my high school was over, my choice was as I watched my dad provide for the family 
and, and, uh, and uh, make a good living, that's something I want to do. And I thought the best choice at that time was to graduate from high school and go get a job just like my dad and start my own life from there. Well, someone up above thought that I had more talent than that. And I got a phone call. Actually, Coach Davis, Leo Davis, some of you guys might know him, got a phone call and said, uh, a coach want to give you a scholarship to come and play baseball at Cumberland College. At that time, it was Cumberland College, a two-year two college. Now it's a university, Cumberland College University. Well, again, my mindset was to go get a job, make some money, buy myself a car, and live life. And uh, Coach Davis thought I had uh, better talent than that. So he, he, he called me in the office and talked to me. And his advice was, Lester, you got a chance to go get a higher education. You, it's not going to cost you anything. And you're going to play a game that you love doing. Okay, I thought about those three things. Okay, I'm going. Went to school. Uh, from there, didn't know what was going to happen after school. Because at that time, because I hadn't put time into what I want to do besides go to work, buy a car, and just live life. I hadn't thought about what I wanted to accomplish in life in the, in the long term. I never thought about being a professional baseball player. I never thought about coaching professional baseball. None of those things I never thought about. I just thought that if I could just get my education and go out and work, that would have been a good thing. And it is a good thing. Uh-oh, this might can't be you, honey. You're right here. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Wow, the technology follows you everywhere. <laughs> so anyway, um, I went to school. I'm not going to bore you. I went to school, went to college, went uh, at a junior college, ended up at a uh, four-year university, Kentucky State University. Uh, but the main priority is, is that the whole time I was playing baseball, I was actually getting an education. And let me say this real quick, because I don't want to forget this, and I've never forgotten it today. <clears throat> when I went to college, at Cumberland College, at, and I think, and it was my fault because I had no idea what I really wanted to study. I had no, re, re, uh, didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to accomplish in life. So I went there with a, pretty much a blank sheet of paper and, and what my goals were. And I, but I loved math. I love math. And uh, I went to uh, sign up and uh, I was going to major in accounting. So I was telling my... Uh, uh, counselor, I want to major in counseling. Well, she says, okay, what else you do? Are you playing any sports, any of that type of thing? I said, yeah. She says, that's a tough major to do and try to play baseball. Well, I didn't know better. I just took their advice. But hindsight 2020, I could have done it. And that's what I'm telling you guys. Don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. If, you, if your heart and, and soul and mind is into it, Go for what you want to do. Yeah, it may be a challenge for you, but anything worth having is, wor is worth working for, okay? So anyway, they told me that, so I ended up going in. I, I took general studies because I, I, I had no uh, uh, idea what I really wanted to do. So I took general studies, and then, of course, by the time I got to my uh, four-year university, Kentucky State University, I chose physical education, which is a very challenging uh, uh, major, by the way. And, uh, and, uh, uh, but anyway, I, I chose that and, and went on and, play, and finished my education as well as played baseball. And, you know, as, as Ken said, I had a blessing. My blessing was my left arm. I didn't realize it, but a lot of people uh, in baseball, professional baseball, realized it. So the next thing you know, I was drafted in the fourth round by the Kansas City Royals to go play professional baseball. Well, now I got a career, something I never thought about. I got a baseball career now. You know, that's my livelihood, baseball. But what I learned in that is that the challenge, the work ethics, the discipline, um, the communication uh, skills you had to have in it, the sacrifices you had to have in it, all those things came into play which I had already had a taste of as I was brought up in life 
as I, uh, through my uh, raising of, from my family, through the coaching, through, from the teachers, from the education, all of that stuff came into play. And I, you know, and I, that's the last thing I thought in baseball that, that I was gonna have to deal with. But I'm, hindsight 2020, I'm glad that, it, that I did have a taste of it because it helped me with my development in the game. So anyway, I was drafted. I played uh, eight years um, as, as in sports, as everybody know, that there, there's, uh, your body can only take so much and eventually it starts breaking down. Uh, again, that's where the education came into play. Knowing that I may not be playing baseball in my life, then I had to have something to fall back on, you know, and I had the education to fall back on. Well, another blessing fell out of the sky and had a fork in the road, as, as he said from the start. Um, as I, at the end of my career, uh, one of the front office people came down and, and gave me a choice of continuing to play, which I know was going south. I knew it. He didn't know it. I knew it was going south, or I could coach. And uh, my wife and I discussed it, and uh, it was a big decision to make. Do I want to continue to try to play baseball? which I, I felt in my heart it wasn't going to take me where I wanted to go, but I, I would still have been able to participate. Or take the coaching job, which at that particular time, my goal was get to the major leagues. So my plan phase of it was fading out. So here's a new route for me as a coach. I can still get to the major leagues. So... I gave up the playing side of it and went to the coaching side of it. And again, as a coach, you're a teacher. So now all those um, uh, pieces of the puzzle of going to school, doing my home, doing my work, uh, work ethics, communication skills, um, the sacrifice, the discipline, all of that's coming into the coaching aspects of it now and here I got uh, uh, young men that I have to teach the game of baseball to so I felt right at home I felt right at home and I, I uh, started out coaching starting from the lowest level just like I did from the playing level rookie ball playing rookie ball coaching and worked my way all the way up to the scales now to the big leagues I've been uh, coaching at the big league level as the bullpen coach for 10 years uh, with the Chicago Cubs. I've been involved in professional baseball for 28 years as a player and a coach. And we finally, through all the hard work, discipline, and um, all the forks in the road, we became the, 19, uh, we became the 2016 world champions. And uh, that's what all the hard work and discipline and, and um, uh, education has done for me. So I, I guess in, 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 in a small uh, sentence, you might say, is, I, I'm trying to leave with is that <clears throat> if, you're going, if you have a goal, believe in yourself, listen to your teachers, listen to your friends, listen to your parents, and any other mentors that might be out there with you, but it's up to you to recognize what, what pieces of all this information is gonna work best for you? Because the bottom line is that it's you the one who have to accomplish your goal. And as you're working on those goals, set, set, set your scale high, set your bar high, but have your many goals to work your way up to it. All right, have your many goals to work your way up to it. All right, because you gotta have direction in whatever you're gonna do. You just can't go out there and just think it's going to happen. That's not going to happen. You got to have a, you got to have goals of how you're going to accomplish your main goal. And as you're doing that, you're going to you're going to realize that you're going to learn. You're learning all sorts of things in life, and uh, you're going to get all sorts of advice in life. So, uh, with that being said, um, I uh, wish each and every one of you the best uh, in whatever you may choose to do, and. Uh, uh, and good luck, okay? Uh,
with that, with at the end of this, uh, what I like to ask you now is that if there's any questions that I that I can assist you with in regards to uh, baseball or in life in general, please uh, stand and, and ask me, and I'll I'll answer your questions. No. Yes, sir. Okay, great question. Before I get to that, though, let me kind of lay it out a little bit, okay? Um, each player has their own individual routine, okay? Just like coaches, we have our own individual, little individual routine. Um, but on the back side of that, when you guys come to the ball game or when you're watching TV, all you're seeing is guys going out and perform, pitching, throwing, hitting, catching, running. That's what you see. But the preparation of that is that before they get to the ballpark, they're at the ballpark for probably about five hours before that game starts. And in the midst of that, they're either doing some conditioning work, they're even, we got an unbelievable video room where they're going and the pitcher that may be pitching against them tonight, they're watching that guy. The, uh, the pitchers that may be pitching against the team, they're watching, again, watching how that guy, uh, how those guys swing or what they like doing in certain situations. Well, as a coach, I pretty much do the same thing. I use the video room, and what I'm doing is I'm analyzing um, <clears throat> the hitters and uh, putting together a report how we want to pitch those guys based upon their weaknesses as well as their strength, because sometimes you get in situations where it's man on man, let's see who's the best, okay? So you need to know their strength as well as their weaknesses. So meanwhile, what I'm doing is I'm putting a report together. That book, and people ask me like, can I see what's in that book? I said, are you ready to go to jail? You know, because that's, that, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's some definite important information in there, and I basically don't share it with anybody, to be honest with you. But anyway, I, 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 it's a, a report book that I've sat down and, and did a lot of uh, video work on and come to uh, 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 terms to what I thought was best in regards to my relievers going out and being successful pitching against the opposing team. Uh, there's a lot of time put into that, a lot of con uh, thoughts put into that, and um, the 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 – Pitchers trust me with the information that I'm getting them that when they go out there and they follow that report that they're going to be successful. And, and as I said before, it, it's a tough game, a very tough game, and sometimes it works and sometimes it, do, it doesn't work. And that's just the way the ball bounced sometimes. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the report was wrong. The bottom line is you have to execute the information that I give you. If you don't execute that information, it's going to be it's going to be tough goings for you. So, um, but in baseball, the one thing we've learned real fast is to forget things real fast, because we play a, a 162 ball games over the course of the season, and if you're stuck on this one game where you had a bad game, it's going to be hard to get to this next game. So you have to forget about what you've done. And again, it's a failure. So learn from that failure that can help you out the next day. You know, so that's just the way it goes in the game of baseball. And, and basically, that's the way it goes in life, if you really think about it. So life is a challenge. And you have to be able to, you have to, you have to want to meet every challenge that come your way. Any other questions? Yes.
It's always a great occasion across the city of McMinnville to recognize one of our hometown heroes, someone who has represented our city and our community for many years in an honorable way. You can see today the life journey that has played out in Coach Strode's life over the last 40 years, actually, since you graduated from high school. So it's, it's always a pleasure to recognize the accomplishments of one of our good citizens who's done well and made us look good, and all the people who have played a part in his life. So as a teacher for 40 years myself, and being mayor of the city of McMinnville, it's always great to bring honor to a respectful person and their families and to recognize them. The day after the Cubs won the World Series, I brought the Strode family to City Hall and we had a proclamation that I read and declared that day as Lester Strode Day. So I want to read that proclamation again today, that whereas Lester Strode, a native of McMinnville, Tennessee, is the bullpen coach for the 2016 Major League Baseball World Series champion Chicago Cubs, whereas Coach Strode's bullpen played a pivotal role in the success of the Cubs during a hard-fought seven-game series, and whereas Coach Strode has been the bullpen coach for the Cubs since the 2007 season, making him the longest tenured coach on the Cubs staff. Whereas Coach Strode was inducted into the Warren County Sports Hall of Fame in 2006. Whereas Strode was a member of the Cumberland Junior College and then Kentucky State University bas baseball teams, following his playing career in Warren County, twice leading the NAIA in strikeouts by Kentucky State. Whereas Strode pitched in the minor leagues for Kansas City, Baltimore, St. Louis, and the Cubs from 1980 to 88. Whereas all citizens of McMinnville should be proud of Lester Strode's accomplishments, especially the World Series win where it's important to recognize individuals from McMinnville who excel at the highest levels. Therefore, I declared that day Curtis Strode Day. On Saturday tomorrow, we'll be honoring Coach Strode again. He'll be the Grand Marshal of the Christmas Parade. Some of you will be involved with that. And so you'll be able to cheer him on once again and bring recognition to the fact that he is a local hometown hero. With that always being said, and people always ask, what's the key to the city? Some mayors have great big giant keys, some have small keys. I'm not giving many of these out over my tenure as, as mayor, but it's always great to recognize those folks who continue to come back to our community and lift up young men and women like yourselves and be a role model for so many over the course of years and all the boys that you have coached over the years as well. And of course, with his wife and his mother here and your father, who is a dear fellow as well, um, they've played a pivotal role also in your part. So this key is not only just necessarily for you, but it's all those people you played a part in your life, parents, family, friends, teachers, coaches. So I want to present with you to you the key to the city of McMinnville, and we hope tomorrow will be a great day as we celebrate you and all your accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you a lot. I feel even blessed more now. Uh, but, I mean, but th this, I guess I can say that this is an example of making good decisions, working hard, staying positive, believing in yourself, and the support of your friends and families, coaches, and, and even your peers. So like, as I said, if, if education is big. It's important. Sports, I think, is very important because it, it enhances, enhances your life in many ways. Uh, but just believe in what you do, trust yourself, and give it your best effort, and good things will happen. Thank you. I think there's another presentation. I think uh, our baseball coach is coming forward. I just want to say on behalf of the baseball team, we're uh, excited to have you back. I know as a fellow Coast fan, I'm excited to meet you. But um, in honor of that, we just want to, yeah. 
if you had brought Chris Bryant with you, my wife would be right here. Um, but anyways, um, we just want to present you with a couple of hats, um, just so you remember Warren County, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. I'm never going to forget Warren County. All right. <laughs> Thank you.